Welcome, rising seniors, to the 2021-2022 course selection presentation. We are so excited to be here today. Um, this has been a very interesting year, and we wish so much that we could be with you in person, but we are looking forward to doing our presentation this year a little differently and are excited that this will give everyone the opportunity to view the presentation at a time that's convenient for you and then to go back and view again if you have any questions. So we are your academic and college counselors. I am Natalie Mauhili and I serve studio students with the last names A through L. And I am Karen Witham and I serve students with the last name M through Z. So today, what we're going to be doing is talking in detail about all the different courses that will be available to you in the upcoming school year. Attached to this video are a number of materials and documents that we've put together that we hope will be really helpful to you all and will answer any of the questions that you might have. Additionally, we will be hosting after this video um, separate parent and student Q&As. And so Ms. Malhealy now is going to talk through the different forms that we have attached, as well as the parent Q&A offerings that we will be putting out to you. Hi Caymans, as we go through this presentation, there will be a number of documents that we reference. One of the most important documents will be the graduation requirements. So that will show you the minimum graduation requirements versus the A through G college bound requirements. And we will go through that in this presentation. We will also have information on how to do a credit check to see um, that you're on track with what you've been taking and what you should be taking next year as a senior. We also have directions on how to find your transcript on Pathways so you can review your credits and your grades. And we will have all of the course selection information for specific classes offered to seniors next school year, along with the Google form link to submit those choices. All of that will be included in the course selection email and posted on Schoology and in the Monday weekly news for CAHS. The important date, date to keep in mind is February 9th. It's a Tuesday. Please make sure you submit all of your course selections online on that form by that date. And on the very last slide in our presentation, we will have all of the specified dates for the parent Q&A times. We have numerous different dates and times so please make sure you come to those and we wanna help you guys answer any questions you have. Reach out to us if you need anything and we are there for you. So as you've heard, we have a lot of great information available to you and attached to this video. Again, that important date to remember is February the 9th. Please make certain February the 9th, um, you have everything turned into us and we are looking forward to a really great 2021-2022 school year. See you later, Caymans. Bye, Caymans. All right, rising seniors, current juniors, we are going to jump right in and get started with our course selection planning for the 2021-2022 school year. Before we get started, I did wanna point out that we have a number of great materials, resources for you attached to this video. What we'd like you to do is to go ahead and print out your transcript from Pathways. You can find the instructions on how to do that um, in one of the email attachments to this document. And at that point, as we roll through our course selection choices, options for senior year, you're able then on your, your transcript to check off those things that you have taken care of so that you have a better idea as to what it is that you need to take and what still might be missing. So this particular doc document on gra our graduation requirements is attached. We'll go through this just briefly now. All students should take or have taken by the time of senior year should have taken world history, US history. If you don't have those two courses, be sure and get signed up for that. Many, most of our seniors are going to need government and economics. So that is a course you'll wanna sign up for. This gives you then a total of 30, elect, 30 social science credits required for graduation. Then in the area of English, there are 40 credits required in English. And the flow with that is English one, two, three, and four. Moving on to math, 30 credits are required for math. 
And this does look a little different. If you are on the minimal graduation plan, then you have to finish with at least math two. So some students on this plan might start in math foundations, do math one, and then do math two. If you are a rising senior and you haven't had math two, you definitely wanna make sure that you have that requested and scheduled for senior year. Then as far as the A through G plan is concerned, all students must have completed math three at the time of graduation although many of our students go on and take higher level maths beyond that. But it's that that is required for the Cal States and the UCs to get that A through G approval. Life sciences. Students must take um, 220 credits of, life sci or of lab science. That includes biology and chemistry. Then most of our students actually on both plans go on to take physical science. So that would be the flow there with lab sciences. Foreign language, this does look a little different between the two plans, the minimal plan, minimum plan. Um, students take just one year of a language. On the A through G plan, students take two years of a language. That language does need to be the same language taken, three years being recommended, but not required. Visual and performing arts. Students on both plans take one, have to have at least one visual and performing arts. However, on this A through G plan, the college bound plan, then you do need to make certain that that visual and performing arts is an A through G approved visual and performing arts. You're gonna know that a student, know that a subject is A through G approved because you're gonna be able to see on the course selections that there's a little P marker next to it. Electives. Five electives are required on the minimum graduation plan. Four are required on the A through G plan. One of those electives must be a G elective. So you're going to want to check, make certain that you have one G elective. Then physical education. Everybody takes two years of physical education. If you are missing that as a senior, you wanna add elective PE in its place. Everyone needs two physical education, two PE courses. And then community service. So community service hours are the same on both plans. 150 hours is the total that needs to be turned in. By the time you are a senior, we like you to turn in those hours every year for a total of 37.5 each school year. We have this document attached to our video. You can go back over and look at this. This is the UC requirements. Again, talking through those A through G courses. So now here we are on sequence one. So this would be the college bound plan. Maybe those students that are looking to go directly to a four year university right out of high school. This is an A through G approved plan. The flow of the Englishes are English one, two, three, and then senior year, you should choose English four or AP um, literature, one of the AP literature or languages courses that we offer. Again, now social sciences, everyone in this group should have had world history, US history. This year, you should be choosing government and economics. Again, if you haven't had, one of those courses, either of those courses, you definitely wanna get those scheduled. The flow for science. Again, we talked a little bit about this, but everyone should have taken biology, chemistry, physics. There are options to have done honors in either of those two areas, chemistry, physics, and some may choose senior year to do an AP bio. Math, again. Everyone must have completed three years of math in high school at different levels. On this A through G plan, you need to have finished with at least math three. So that would be your math choice. If you are needing math three, then you would add that senior year. Foreign language, we have two levels of the same language that's required, three to four recommended. So students on this plan should, on A through G plan should have taken or be taking Spanish one, two or Spanish three, four. 
if you've completed one too, if that is something that you are wanting to flow and go on with, you, you are absolutely encouraged and welcome to do that. Um, or AP Spanish language. Then in the area of French, students should have taken French one and two um, or French three, four. So you're checking your transcript. Again, two levels of the same language, um, three, four being recommended, but not required. Visual and performing arts. Only one VAPA is required on this plan, but it must be an A through G VAPA. So check to see that your VAPA was an A through G approved VAPA. You will know that by seeing that there's a marker next to it that's a P marker, and then you know that you've met that category. Elective requirements. Four electives are required on this plan. One elective must be a G elective. Keep in mind that A3G courses where you go above the minimum requirement, for instance, say you've taken three math and then you elect to take a fourth math, that then counts as your G elective. So that's important to keep in mind. If you've taken Spanish one, two or French one, two, and you go on to Spanish three, four, French three, four, then the Spanish or the French three becomes the G elective. PE, two years of PE are required on both plans. If you're missing a PE, then you can just choose this year, elective PE that counts then towards that PE requirement. And here's our community service, the same amount, 150 hours, encouraging all of you now, if you haven't already, to turn in the hours that you have completed. On your Schoology, you're able to do that, to log in hours. So we wanna encourage you to go ahead and log in those community service hours. Sequence two plan. This is our minimal graduation, minimum graduation plan. Many students are on this plan that are looking to um, maybe go directly into the workforce, trade school, community college. Um, this plan meets all of our graduation requirements. And so we're gonna walk through this plan now. So on this plan, same, you're required to do four years of English. And so most will be choosing English four now, senior year. Social sciences. Everyone on this plan, the same on social sciences, should have taken world history, US history, and probably be scheduling government and economics. Sciences, same sort of a flow to sciences, biology, chemistry, and then physics being highly recommended. Math, three years of math. So this is the one where you wanna check, make sure you've had a total of three years of math, three different years of math. On this plan, you need to finish with at least math two. So if you started, say, at math foundations, it could flow as math foundations, math one, math two. World languages. So this looks a little different. On the world languages, you just need to have taken or take Spanish one or French one. Although many students on this plan still go ahead and do the Spanish two or French two, and those then fall into that elective category, those second years of language. Visual and performing arts, one year is required on this plan and that visual and performing arts does not necessarily need to be an A through G approved visual and performing arts. Five electives, so you get an extra elective on this particular plan, sequence two. PE looks exactly the same. Two years of PE are required. Community service looks exactly the same. And on both plans, their total units required for graduation are 220. So whether it's the minimum plan or the A through G plan, it's 220 credits. The differences between the two plans, no math three is required on sequence two. Only one year of a language is required on sequence two. Electives, one additional elective is given and no G elective is required for sequence two. Additionally, on the A through G plan, no grades of D are allowed on this plan. So if you have grades of D and you are trying to be A through Gs, this is the year that you will want to reschedule all of those courses. If you have any any classes that you received a D in, then you're going to want to be sure and make a note and go ahead and reschedule those for us. 
we came up with just a mock ninth grade schedule, what somebody in the ninth grade might have chosen. So you can look at that briefly and you can come back to these slides and view again. Just make certain that you've had these courses. We also rolled out an example schedule. Most of our seniors now, you all know the flow of our accelerated courses and what that looks like. But if anybody's new, then hopefully this is helpful for you to just look through and see how typically courses are laid out in the school year. 10th grade here would be a typical 10th grade um, offering selection of courses. Obviously with everybody, it does look different, but we wanted to just roll out something for 10th something the same for 11th, what some, someone doing course selection in 11th might choose. And now here we are with A through G and what you might be looking at for next year on that plan. So again, it can and does look very different for everybody, but English, most students are choosing English four, maybe an AP English, government economics, some form of math perhaps, an AP science, maybe that AP bio, an elective, and then the dual credits. So many of our seniors too do elect to take dual credits. We'll talk about that. So sequence two plan, again, now this is a typical rollout of what a student might have taken in the ninth grade, what that example schedule would look like. 10th grade, what that 10th grade student might have taken. So again, you can refer back to these slides if you would like to just make sure you've covered all these subjects. 11th grade, what that could look like on the sequence two. Here's our 12th grade. So on this particular plan, maybe you'd finish with um, English four, maybe math three, government economics, and again, those electives. Important notes, VAPAs, G electives, and any electives can be taken at any point in high school. Um, you're just choosing those electives um, and those VAPAs based on really your high school experience, extracurricular activities that you might have going on. So just according to your academic load. It is important, especially for this group, that all of your community service hours are getting turned in. Again, you can do that on Schoology. And we really recommend that you do that ahead of, ahead of time so that your transcript gets cleaned up. And when we submit those transcripts to the colleges that they see that community service showing and listed. Those of you that are looking at colleges, maybe don't have a college picked out yet, maybe you're still looking, searching, trying to find that best fit. College Board has a great website, bigfuture.org. This is a great place to create a profile for yourself. You can plug in your interests if you know your college major. And if you don't, that's okay too. You can plug in different parts of the country, what you're looking for in colleges, and it will actually send you back a list of colleges that they would believe would be a good fit and would be colleges for you to further explore. Naviance is also a place that you can create a profile and can begin a college search. So those are two great resources. If you're wanting some more information about college and wanting to get maybe a list of colleges that perhaps you haven't thought about, this is a great resource. We also want to encourage you to attend our college planning nights. So that will happen for seniors in the fall, just as we did for all of you junior year, we will do the same thing again for senior year, just to kind of go back, go over what's required for college admissions, um, what applications look like, all of that. We'll also talk through SAT, ACT, as well as dual credit. So we cover a whole lot in those meetings and really want to encourage you to come out and attend. That's open to both parents and to students. So we talked a little about dual credit. Dual credit agreements exist between us and Palomar. And we do have concurrent enrollment packets available in our front office for Palomar. Miracosta has moved to doing everything online. So you start with Miracosta. Once you're signed up with them, they send the counselors, Ms. Mauhealy and myself, those some documents. We approve 
the document. We approve you to take those college courses and then it is sent back to them and put on file and you, you are able to then start. It's a great way for students to get free classes, free college classes while in high school. But we are cautionary in that when you take courses at the local community college while you're in high school, it's important to know that whatever grades you make now do follow you. That does go on your permanent college record. So we recommend that our students with A and B, our AB students, take advantage of that opportunity if that's something that they do have an interest in. And um, we certainly encourage students to, to check that out and have, and have the packets and folders, like I say, available for Palomar in the front office. So in a few minutes, Ms. Mauhealy is gonna talk through all of the attachments, the forms that we have um, for you, how to fill some of those out, just some pointers, some good pointers on what to be looking for uh, when you actually come to doing course selection. I wanna have you all mark a note, make a note for yourself that, fe that February um, the 9th, you need to have everything turned into us for course selection. So that's a really important date. So mark that if you haven't already on your calendars. And then we wanna let you know that we will have counselor Q&A times. We have set this up grade specific, but we want everyone to be able to come and get their questions answered. So while it is grade specific, it is offered on both Friday the 5th as well as Monday the 8th. If however, you are unable to come on the day and time that is offered for your specific grade, we wanna encourage you just join one of our other groups. We will help in any way that we can. It will be an open conversation, answering questions that are your questions, things that we can help you with. Our feedback is always when parents attend that even sometimes if they're just listening in, there are things answered that maybe they wouldn't have thought to ask. And again, most importantly, gives you a good opportunity for us to help in any way that we can with any of your questions. So with all that said, now I'm gonna turn this over to Ms. Mauhealy, who is going to actually talk you through the forms and the materials in our attachments. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. I will walk through some of the forms that are included with um, all of your course selection information to make informed choices for your courses for next school year. So um, with all the information sent out about course selection, each grade level will have this course selection packet cover, and then all the attachments will be included on it. Um, since everything is going to be turned in virtually um, and submitted by Tuesday, February 9th. So to start out, um, we have a step-by-step -step, um, process that we have over here for you. Before I get started on that, I'm just going to quickly go through a couple of the attachments we have here just so you guys know what they are. Um, I'll start from the bottom. We have our bell schedule um, based on what our traditional bell schedule has previously been. If you needed to take a look at that, we are a period one through four schedule um, and then with an optional zero period as well. Here is a sh um, an attachment to Naviance, which is how our seniors request transcripts for non-common application schools and also letters of recommendation for non-common application schools. And um, if you guys have not been in that yet, there's also personality assessments, career assessments, um, college search tools in there. That's where we also list all of our um, college visits. So please check out Naviance when you guys have a chance if you have not yet already because it's a great tool for you guys. Here's our club list of our current clubs for this school year. If you're interested in looking um, at some for next school year, perhaps you might even want to try and start a new club for next school year. So just take a look at that and review it. Um, this is very important, the course catalog. So this has the course um, descriptions. So when you are interested in a certain course and want to learn more about it, you can go through this and take a look. Um, and this really helps you make a more informed decision. It has prerequisites included. Um, and so I definitely recommend looking at this and looking up courses that you wanna know more about before making your choices. Um, this is the tool to pathways to find your transcripts. So um, when you guys go and do kind of like your graduation check and look at what you've taken, um, this will help 
take you to pathways to get your transcript, um, to view your unofficial transcript. Um, I will go over the course selection form in just a minute with all the courses for next school year that we plan to offer for your grade. Um, this is the academic prep brochure for students um, um, applying to the CSU system, just showing how your uh, state testing CAS scores um, can help you meet certain requirements for English or math. Um, take a look at that. And then this is a four year course sequence. Um, we put this out just so you can kind of look and see what maybe a traditional um, four year course sequence might look like. That's just for your information. This is the minimum and college bound requirements that Mrs. Witham went through on our presentation. So um, you guys are welcome to keep that, print a copy of that if you have any questions about what is required depending on each graduation plan. Um, all right, so we are actually going to go back here to this this one up here, the step by step instruction process. So first, you're going to create um, complete a credit check sheet using a credit check sheet that I will show you um, and you will compare your transcript and then fill this in. So the credit check sheet looks like this right here. So depending on if you are on the minimum graduation requirement plan or the A through G college bound requirement plan, that's where you would start filling in your credit. So when looking at this, you're going to do a check and make sure that you have English 1, 10 credits, you know, English 2, 10 credits. The A and B there is showing you the first term and the second term because each course will have one, a first final grade, an A portion, and then a second final grade, a B portion. So you can circle the ones you have taken and passed. And then if you're currently in a course, you can put a triangle. That means you're currently taking it. And then the X's can be what you plan to take senior year. And then you can check and make sure that you um, will be meeting all the requirements on your graduation plan. You need 220 credits to graduate. Um, 150 hours of community service are required. And that equates to 10 elective credits once you turn um, complete and turn all those in. So you guys can go through this. Um, it is important to say, I know Mrs. Witham had mentioned it, that if you um, take above the minimum requirement um, in a certain category, those start moving towards electives. So a lot of our kids might take Spanish one, Spanish two, and then Spanish three can come down here. It's A through G, so it could be a G elective. Um, and Spanish four can be an elective. Um, students might take biology, chemistry, and then physics. So bio and chem are required and then physics down here under electives. Um, so all students must take and um, um, go, go through this and kind of do a little check on yourself. Um, and we're happy to help answer questions, come out to our Q&A if you have questions, but we feel like this is a really great tool for you guys to kind of look over and see where you're at with your credits. All right, so coming back to the step-by-step -step instruction. So you'll review the graduation requirements. If you are really credit deficient, please reach out to your counselor ASAP so they can help come up with a plan for you. Um, they might offer some summer school suggestions as well. Um, review the, review the four-year course sequence sheet if you'd like to go over that. And then next you'll go over the course selection sheet with all the courses, and then you'll go to the actual link to submit your classes. So I will go over that next. Here is the paper form of the course selections. What we recommend is that you print this out and keep this for your records or save it, keep it for your records. Um, you're gonna wanna mark what classes you actually submit and take online. So that way when you um, refer back later, you'll be like, oh, what did I pick? And then you'll have a copy of what you submitted. Um, so you can review this, see what your options are. And then on the right hand side, we have our prerequisites for courses. So please be paying attention to that and looking at if you meet the prerequisite to take a certain course when you're signing up. Um, and this lists all of our options here. Um, be paying attention for that P. A P means something is A through G approved if you are on the college bound A through G track. Um, so there is that form. And then lastly, we will go back and go to the actual link to submit your courses. So I will quickly show you guys what this form looks like and how you'll fill it out. So when you're filling in your email address, you can go ahead and fill in your email and then your last name and then your first name and then your parents' email address. So go ahead and put in whichever your parent email address is and then what grade you will be in next school year. So please make sure you mark that off. Um, if you will be, a, this grade will be a senior. So you'll mark senior. 
and then you will move on. You will confirm that you have read this. Please read through this carefully. And then there will be a contract at the end as well. You will go ahead and enter your five digit student ID number. You can find this on your student ID card or um, on pathways on your dashboard. And then you will just go through each category and fill in your selection. So most students will either be taking English 4 or an AP English, AP Lit. So go ahead and think through and pick what you would like to choose. AP classes are always year long. Um, math, you'll go ahead and decide, you know, depending on where you're at, do you want to take another year of math, depending on which plan you're on. We do highly recommend four years of math, especially for our um, A through G college bound students. So go ahead and pick which math level you might be moving on to. Let's say you're currently in math three and you want to move to math four. Um, some students might have met their three year requirement. If that's the case, you can check that box. We do have an other box for some students if they want to give us um, some more information about another plan they might have. Um, here is the history options, um, government and econ or AP Gov and regular econ. Um, some students might actually, for some reason, maybe they need US history too. You can actually type this in right here while clicking government and econ and then also US history if that was what you needed. Or maybe you need to repeat a grade. You can type that in that box. Here's the foreign language. Um, many seniors will probably have this um, language requirement met or maybe you're gonna take AP Spanish. It just depends on where you're at with that requirement. So please select whichever applies to you. Here's our science options. You know, maybe you want to take physics or AP biology. It depends on where you're at with science. Um, you can click more than one, depending on what you'd like. And then here are your visual and performing arts options. So please go ahead and make the best choice for you. All students need at least one visual and performing arts. And if um, you are trying to meet the A through G college bound track, you need it with to have a P on it, um, which means it's A through G approved. So please take a look at those. Maybe you've already met that requirement. And if so, you check that box. Um, what electives, um, here's our elective options that we might offer next school year. Please mark if you're interested in any. Same thing, if you're trying to meet a specific G elective, you need to look for that P on it. Um, let's just say we're interested in sports medicine. You might have all your electives met. So if that's the case, you can mark that there. This question is very important. Are you willing to take any class zero period? So if you are willing and able to take any class zero period, please mark yes. This can help if you're trying to get your day to end a little sooner. Um, maybe you play a sport and you wanna be done sooner. Um, if you are not able, please mark no. And um, we will do our best to not schedule any students for a zero period if they do not select it as long as a class that they chose is not only zero period. Um, so go ahead and fill that in. Special circumstances box. This is if you feel like there's something we need to know when our um, scheduler is making schedules and you can give us some information. Sometimes an older student has to drive their siblings so they need their schedules to align with each other. Um, so if there's anything you'd like us to be aware of, please know we cannot guarantee that we can accommodate all requests, but we do try our best when we can. And then here's our sports options. This is an interest list. If you're interested in one of these, go ahead and mark it off um, and let us know. Some coaches use this um, to pull emails to send out communication. All right, and then here's the course contract. Please make sure you guys read through this and then you will sign and electronically submit your name. And again, you'll put your parent email address for confirmation. So if there are any scheduling issues, um, there can be communication about that if there's conflicts or anything. Um, one important note, um, I wanted to make sure you guys are aware of our minimum amount to stay enrolled. All students have to be in a minimum of 30 credits for the school year and at least two core NC classes at all times. And for CIF students, they must be in a minimum of 40 credits for the year with at least 20 credits per semester. So that's important to note. And um, if you plan to graduate early, please reach out to your counselor because you have to um, sign off on an early graduation contract. So that way you understand all the details in regards to that. So you would go ahead and you'd submit this. And one more important thing is that if you submit your um, course selection and you wanna make a change, please do not submit another course selection submission. 
you need to email Mrs. Fletcher, our guidance technician at lfletcher at classicalacademy.com and she can make the change or the edit for you. Um, we don't want duplicates. This um, does not help with our numbers when we are trying to create a master schedule for our classes. So um, please pay attention to that. And then this is just the course contract again for you guys to have a copy of. So um, with all that being said, we are very excited. We hope that this whole presentation was very helpful for you guys and helps you make informed decisions. Again, we invite you all out to come to one of our parent and student um, counselor Q and A's. Um, we will be running these virtually and we would love for you to join us if you have questions. And we all hope that you have a great rest of your junior year and have a great senior year as well. Have a great day. Bye everyone. Well, hello and greetings. Uh, my name is Mr. Holtz and um, I teach English at Classical Academy. Um, I've uh, been a teacher for 15 years and uh, I love books and I like reading. Not because I like the act of reading, but because uh, reading changes my mind, uh, <laughs> literally. And uh, so it can for you too. Um, I, on the side, I teach a survey of classical literature. Uh, this is uh, kind of a great books course. We've, uh, for the last couple of years, we've been working through some of the great uh, texts of Western literature from ancient Greece all the way up to uh, now we're into, what are we into? Oh, Plato, Aristotle, those kinds of things. Take a look, see. Check out some of these titles. And if you're interested, this course is for you. It's an elective course. It runs year round. And we read a lot of good stuff and have great conversations. So join me if you did. Hola, I'm Prof. Hegler and I teach AP Spanish at Classical Academy High School. AP Spanish Language and Culture is your chance to take your Spanish speaking, listening, reading, and writing skills to the next level. Spanish is spoken every day in class and less emphasis is on grammar while we focus our time on learning and talking about the culture, history, politics, art, and music of the Spanish-speaking world. We cover six themes, including global challenges, science and technology, contemporary life, personal and public identities, family and communities, and beauty and aesthetics. Our class size is small. This year we have 12 students, so this means plenty of one-on-one -on -one interaction with your teachers and classmates. So sign up for AP Spanish and be prepared to be inspired. Well, hello, Caymans. I am Mr. Iker, and I'm here to answer the question, should I take AP Stats? And I'm here to say, yes, <laughs> you should take AP Stats. How I feel about statistics, I'm Michael Scott, and Jim Halpert is statistics. I love statistics, and I would love to share my love of statistics with you so that by the end of the course you're giving statistics a really big hug. What will you learn in statistics? Well, we'll take a voyage through many different types of statistical studies and analyses and questions like, should I trust this political poll? What principles are considered when developing drugs in the medical field? Is there an association between chocolate consumption and winning the Nobel Prize? Can the sense of smell be used to diagnose Parkinson's disease? How to pass the AP exam and other skills that you can use in the workforce. AP Stats is a math class with very little math. So you win the jackpot by taking AP Statistics. And who can sign up for AP Stats? You do not have to be a math ninja to take AP Stats. You need to have completed Math 3 with a C or better. Be willing to read and talk and share and consider. Keep up with assignments because after all it is an AP class, so there are assignments that you have to do. And you can take Math 4 and AP Calc concurrently if you're really mathy and want to do both. And know that an A in the class counts as a 5.0 and a B as a 4.0 like other AP classes. But really, ultimately, why take AP Statistics? Well, there's a slew of college majors that require statistics, and this isn't the total list. I ran out of space, so here's the rest. So I hope to see you soon. If you have questions, here's my email, or you can message me on Schoology. See you next year. Hey, <laughs> hi, I'm uh, David Bauer. 
how objects move. What if it's moving in a straight line? You can predict the motion of any object if you understand the basics of physics. Analyzing forces like the force pushing forward on this car and the force of friction, figuring out why things move or why they stay where they are <laughs> on a circular path. The Earth spinning. How much force is required to keep you from flying off into outer space? I let it go. It comes back. Energy is conserved. I could use that kinetic energy to do work on some bowling pins. Dude. Why is it that when he inhales helium that his voice changes? 400,000 volts. It will not harm you. The flow of electricity is like the flow of water through Short pipe. a long pipe. Narrow pipe. A wide pipe. And you'll be able to understand things on a level that makes you scary smart. Scary smart. <laughs> Smarter about how things move, why things move, things moving in circular motion, gravity, energy, momentum, waves, electricity, electric circuits. Wow. You'll be steady smart. By the time you leave physics, I hope you'll join me.